Hello and good evening. I'm Melissa Idris. And I'm Sharad Kutin. Welcome to Consider This, the show where we want you to consider and then reconsider what you know of the news of the day. Of course, let's begin the show with news that the Dewan Raya Speaker Tan Sri Muhammad Arif Yusuf has accepted Tun Dr. Mahathir Mohamad's motion of no confidence in Tan Sri Muhyiddin Yassin's leadership. However, Mama Arif's statement did not specify when the motion will be tabled. Joining us on the line now to help put this all into context, we have Ibrahim Sufyan, better known as Ben, uh, Program Director at Merdeka Centre. Welcome to the show, Ben. What do you think are the political ramifications of the Speaker's decision to allow for the uh, motion of no confidence? Hi, uh, Melissa. Thanks for having me on. Uh, I think this is in many ways unprecedented. Uh, to have uh, the speaker grant a motion of no confidence against the sitting prime minister. Uh, and in part, it's uh, reflective of the situation where uh, the speaker is a holdover from the previous Pakatan uh, Harapan uh, administration, and uh, he has allowed uh, the motion to, uh, of no confidence against the PM. Uh, I think the, the immediate impact is, I think, the... Uh, estimation of whether or not the Prime Minister can survive the vote. And I think a deeper question would be, how will the two coalitions uh, react to this motion? Because as we understand, on, the, on one side, uh, Pakatan Harapan is not completely in sync with uh, Tun Dr. Mahade, who has put this motion across. Uh, so there is, I think, a lot of question as to whether Pakatan Harapan is going to join forces with uh, Dr. Mahathir and uh, Pati Warisan Sabah in order to make up the numbers uh, to on, on the day itself. Ben, uh, can, I, can I interject here for a second? Uh, apparently, you know, in 2015, uh, uh, Dalsri uh, Wanaziza put up a, a no-confidence motion. It seems in the past there have been instances, but they were never debated. There were reasons why that motion never made it to the House to, for debate. Uh, and there's expectations that, in fact, this time, uh, things might not, in fact, uh, pan out for this particular motion. Do you, do you factor that in as a possibility? Yeah, I mean, I do factor that one in. But I think first and foremost is that uh, we do have a situation where the sitting administration, you know, enjoys only a very slim majority at best. And there's also a question mark as to whether it really does have a majority. So I think this test in parliament, if it comes to uh, the extent, uh, we'll actually show whether or not the Prime Minister really enjoys majority. Now, uh, the other part that I wanted to add in is the, the strength of his coalition partners, whether do they really support him uh, in, in all genuineness, because there are also, I think, some view that uh, there are parties in his coalition, in Parikata National, that might favour snap post being caught. Uh, that is, of course, if the motion of no confidence sees the light of day, in the sense that the the speaker allows it to take precedence on May 18th. Uh, but if it doesn't, one can still see it come about again in the next parliamentary sitting, you know, which people say will be in July. Okay. All right, Ben. So if the motion is debated, uh, we don't know when yet, but if it is debated, then what do you see as the consequences of its uh, success or failure? Well, I think it's really touch and go because we don't really know uh, in all clarity the number of MPs that support the Prime Minister. Because when the Prime Minister gained, uh, or rather uh, got the support to form administration, uh, he claimed the, uh, he had the support of the majority, counting the numbers he had in his party, as well as uh, AMNO and PAS and other parties. But I think as things have panned out, they are not, not all of the MPs in Bersatu are with him. So there are some question marks as to whether or not uh, he really does command support. I think that's, that uh, arithmetic is something that I think people want to put to rest and therefore then have confidence that he can continue to uh, manage the government. Uh, so ben, as a pollster, no, yeah, I don't want to, sorry to inter interject again, but as a pollster, do you have a sense of the public mood? I mean, do, you know, especially are people um, open to the idea of uh, more political competition in, in terms of a parliamentary game? Is, is that where the country is at this point in time? I mean, we've done some polling, you know, uh, right around late March, early April, where we uh, looked at, 
you know, how the public viewed the government, you know, and we did this on the back of some of the polling. But at that point in time, it does appear that the public doesn't really have stomach for politicking because a lot of people are basically consumed with the COVID-19 virus, the impact of the lockdown. And I think people now at this point in time are getting increasingly concerned about the condition of the economy and how it's going to impact their livelihood. So I think the people, I think at this point in time, does want government to stay focused on fixing the economy and getting Malaysia back to work. Uh, and so calling for a motion of no confidence within two weeks' time might be, I think, a bit premature and might put off some people who feel that this is too much politics at a time when the country is facing a grave crisis. Well, thank you so much for speaking with us, uh, Ben, tonight. We appreciate your time. Now, we're going to take a quick break. We'll be back in just a few minutes. Stay tuned to Consider This. Thank <laughs> you.